Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We'll talk about free modules today. Eh? So this is and uh, for us we will only be talking about free modules of finite rank or finitely generated free modules. These are the ones which uh, resemble finite dimensional vector spaces but they are just over arbitrary rings. So the definitions are all very very familiar so this should look like vector spaces so suppose I take a ring R uh, not necessarily commutative can be anything uh, what's the free module so let's define this uh, to be R to the n so the free module well any such thing is called a free module okay what does it look like looks like R to the n which is all n tuples so this is all elements of the form um, a1 a2 a n where a i's come from the ring r okay and we think of this as an r module okay what's the r module structure well we do component wise addition and component wise scalar multiplication so this becomes a left r module under the component wise operations component wise addition and scalar multiplication okay and this is of course uh, since we have talked about direct sums and so on uh, as you can see this is actually nothing but another way of saying look at just r thought of as a module over itself and this is just isomorphic to the direct sum of r with itself n times okay you take n copies of of the ring r thought of as a module over itself and that direct sum is exactly what we we are thinking of in this way okay and of course these share a lot of properties with vector spaces over a field or with n dimensional vector spaces but there are also some important differences okay so we need to sort of be a little wary of these uh, so let's look at the standard basis in some sense so let's define the element ei which is zero everywhere else except one in the ith position so this is the ith place zeros okay so we we define this as ei i goes from one to n and uh, as is clear every element of the ring r because the operations are component wise if i give any element of this module sorry if i take an element x in rn then this element can be uniquely written so every element x in rn can be uniquely expressed as a linear combination of these eis summation C I E I. This is more or less from definition where the C I is come from the ring R. Okay, so um, that is like vector spaces again and the key point is uh, free modules are especially good when you are trying to define homomorphisms from it to other modules. So how do you define homomorphisms from a free module? So suppose I give you a free module Rn and I want to define a homomorphism to any other R module M. Okay, I want a homomorphism. Uh, the way to define it is just by uh, stipulating its values on a basis. Okay, so a homomorphism is uniquely determined by its values on a basis. So a homomorphism phi to any module m is uniquely determined once you tell me what the basis elements go to by the values phi of e i and why is that because once you know it on the basis on any other element you will just use a fact that 
that element can be written as summation C i E i and uh, therefore, the property of homomorphism says I can pull all the C i's out write it as a linear combination. So, this is just by the definition of a homomorphism and since I have stipulated these values there are some elements of m uh, summation C i times those elements is some well defined element of m. Okay, so, this is how uh, you would define the homomorphism. Okay, so, this is this is also well defined. So, this is like uh, if I pick arbitrary. So, okay, so there is actually a existence and uniqueness statement that is hidden in this uh, which is that if you give me some elements m i then I can find a homomorphism such that phi e i is m i and uh, there is only a unique such homomorphism. Okay. So, maybe one should just make this uh, slightly more precise. So, let me just make the precise statement and you know you can just prove it from what I just said. Uh, so, here is the statement given m i's in m there exists a unique homomorphism phi from R n to m which maps E i to m i. Okay. So, this is really the key statement this is the statement I am trying to make okay. and the proof is more or less obvious. Okay. So, this is how you define homomorphisms from R n and so, it is sort of uh, interesting to study homomorphisms from R n to another free module R m. Okay. So, by the same token suppose I wanted to understand what homomorphisms from R n to R m look like. So, what am I supposed to do uh, to specify this homomorphism what I should do is for each E i I should give you some element m i okay, in this module R m. Okay. Now, uh, what does R m look like? Well, there are too many m. So, maybe I will just give this some other name. Let me call it x i. So, I need to specify an element x i in R m, but R m remember itself is uh, again a free module. So, any element of R m can be uniquely written as a linear combination of its basis elements. right? So, let, let, let me give the basis elements of R m a name. Let me call them f j's now. So, what is f j? This is 0, 0, 0. 1 in the jth place okay, 0 0 0. So, I am thinking of it as an element of the free module R m. Okay, so, so, observe that f 1 f 2 f m will form a um, sort of a basis for R m if you wish. Okay, so, each x i since it is an R m it can be uniquely written as a linear combination of the f j's. Okay, so, let us do that let us write x i as some linear combination and now I will use a i j s to denote the linear combination uh, the elements of r which occur in the linear combination. So, this is now the sum j goes from 1 to m. Okay. Uh, and what are the a i j s? They are some elements of r. So, what are a i j s? Okay. So, uh, our previous discussion then says that to specify a homomorphism from R n to R m you just need to tell me what are all these x i's these n x i's or equivalently you just need to tell me what these uh, scalars a i j are. Now, here how many of them are there i is from 1 to n j is from 1 to m and the appropriate way to arrange this is in the form of a matrix just like we do for vector spaces. So, a homomorphism phi is uniquely determined by a matrix. So, I, I want to say let us take an m cross n matrix this is like in the convention for vector spaces. So, this is an m cross n matrix. Uh, so, to, to be very precise uh, I mean for it to match our usual conventions uh, what I should do is to uh, change these these i's and j's around. So, let me just uh, do one little thing here so that it matches with vector spaces. So, let me say uh, let me take e j. So, j will go from 1 to n. So, I am going to switch the roles of i and j here. Uh, so, e j maps to x j. Okay, now, i which is this other variable now will go from 1 to m. Okay, so, i goes from 1 to m and observe that 
uh, what I am doing here is what we do for vector spaces which is that we put the scalars along the columns. Okay, So, what does this mean? So, what have I done? I am saying Ej maps to Xj, Xj is summation Aij Fi. Okay? So, in other words, the if I wanted to know what is phi acting on Ej, then the scalars which occur are in the jth column of A. Okay? So, this is our usual convention, arrange along the columns rather than along the rows. Okay, so, I hope that uh, uh, definition is clear there. So, I just need to tell you what these scalars are, these uh, I need to tell you this m cross n matrix um, a i j. Now, uh, let us sort of look at one little difference. Now, so far it is looking a lot like vector spaces, but there is one little twist to the tail. So, let us just see, suppose I give you this matrix. So, given this matrix A, given, given A. So, what is A now? It is an element of so, let me use this notation matrices m cross n whose entries are not in a field necessarily, but in the ring R. So, given a matrix A m cross n with entries in R, we define the homomorphism phi as before using this matrix by saying that the value on E j is the scalars in the jth column. So, A i j f i. Uh, i goes from 1 to n okay, and this is for all j between 1 and n. So, if we do this then what does the uh, value become on a general element? Okay, so, suppose I, I pick a, on a general element of on a general element x in R n. So, what does that mean? I, I can write this element x as some linear combination x j e j. Okay. On a general element, how does phi act? Let us compute phi, phi acting on x. Now, we have to be very careful when we do this. So, phi acting on summation x j e j by definition is I can pull the x j's out, j goes from 1 to n, x j phi e j okay. and phi e j remember is what is written on top. So, there is a double summation here. But since R is not a commutative ring, I have to be careful with the order in which I multiply my scalars. Okay, so, phi of Ej, I am just going to use this uh, equation on top, which says this is summation i goes from 1 to m. Uh, this is uh, xj times aij times uh, fi. Okay, and um, I can switch the order of summation here. I can think of it as summing first over i, then over j. That's that's fine. I'm just doing the same sum in a different order. So this is summation i goes from one to m. Summation j goes from one to n now. And what I have here is x j a i j. Okay, times f i. Okay. So, this is my this is my final um, formula. So, observe, so I am sort of doing this slowly uh, to point out that you know in the case of vector spaces you still get the same formula, but the ring there is a field okay, which is commutative. So, these uh, in the case of vector spaces we would tend to write this formula as summation a i j x j rather than summation x j a i j. But in this case you are not allowed to commute these two things, the x has to come before the entries of a okay so this is the this is the key point to note here that we are used to writing it in the other order for vector spaces because they commute but when you're trying to do this for general rings we have to be a little careful okay so anyway that's the that's the formula here now observe this is uh, so we we should really think of this as um, well if if we were able to commute these two guys you would write this as the product of the matrix A with the column vector x and this is the ith element in that product. In this case, you cannot quite do that. Okay? So, let us just look at one more um, such case where it will become clearer. 
So if I take for example Rn, Rm, Rp, so I take three such um, free modules and I sort of do a similar thing. I take a basis of this free module, call it Ek, this free module, call it Fj, uh, let's call these Vi's. Okay, so this is now k going from 1 to n, j going from 1 to m and i going from 1 to p. Okay, so I take three, three bases and now I, I have two homomorphisms phi and psi. Each homomorphism is determined by the knowledge of an appropriate matrix, right? So suppose I call those two matrices which determine this homomorphism and this homomorphism. Let us call the corresponding matrices A and B. Okay, A will be whatever m cross n and B will be p cross m, right? So, this is m cross n and this is going to be p cross m. So, I have two matrices and now if I compute what the matrix of their composition is, okay, this is again something which we are used to doing in the case of vector spaces. So, uh, if you compute psi composition phi and I need to figure out what the, the matrix of the composition looks like which means I should just figure out what the what this composition does to the basis vectors E k right to these elements E k. So, I need to compute the value on E k. So, let us just do that that is just psi evaluated on phi of E k. Okay. Now, I am given that this matrix is A that means I know what phi of E k is. This is just psi of summation uh, A let us call this j k f j. Now, j is being summed over 1 to m. Now, when I apply psi to this, what am I supposed to do? I pull the a out, j goes from 1 to m. This becomes a j k and I need to evaluate psi of f j. Okay. So, this is psi of f j and in the last step, uh, what I mean suppose do psi of fj has to be replaced by whatever it is it is equal to right. So, let me let me just do it right there. So, let me raise this psi of fj is summation it is given by the matrix B summation i from uh, so this is B i j E i. Okay. So, I have just used the definition of psi of fj and the matrix B. Okay, so, now you will already start seeing uh, a, a problem. So, I, I, I just changed the order of summation this i goes from 1 to p and inside is summation j equals 1 to m a j k b i j times e i. Okay. And now, we are done that is the, the end of the computation because I am trying to find out what is the, the, compos uh, the comp composed map acting on e k. Uh, uh, um, sorry, this should have been V's here. So, this should have been V i. It is an element of R p. So, now the composed map uh, is again given by a matrix, right. The entries of that matrix are exactly what I get when I write psi composition phi e k as a linear combination of the V i's. But now, these therefore are the entries of that matrix. Okay. So, what this means is that psi composition phi Suppose this is given by a matrix C, okay, and this is now a P cross N matrix, right? Uh, P cross N would be this full composition here. Okay, now in the in the case of uh, if you remember how things work in the case of uh, vector spaces, we would just say, oh, that matrix C is known. It's just a product of the two matrices B and A, right? This is how it works when you compute. Uh, matrices of linear transformations in the case of vector spaces. But now observe that uh, our answer is not quite that because A and B I mean it is almost it is looking like that if the ring were commutative then of course, you could change the order of B and A and rewrite this this term here as B i j a j k sum over j okay? and then it would exactly be the product of B and A. Okay? Now, the trouble is here it you know things do not commute. So, this matrix C that you have uh, the elements of this matrix are the following uh, C i k the kth column 
ith entry is the sum j going from 1 to n okay and it's almost what you would expect in the case of uh, vector spaces you would have expected the following it's b times a so you would have written b i j times a uh, a j k this is what you would have wanted to write in the case of vector spaces but in this case it does not occur like that it occurs in the other order okay so which means that this this a actually occurs on the other side so i need to push this a over to the other side okay so uh, that's the that's the form of the answer here okay so let's just erase this make it slightly neater so this a j k b i j and that sort of seems um, rather unfortunate that we can't quite think of it the same way as vector spaces but uh, what we do is something rather interesting here recall that we talked about something called the opposite ring of ring r okay so recall uh, i once talked about something called r op what is this it's the same ring um, it's the same set r with the same addition but the multiplication alone is is different so what's the new multiplication in the opposite ring if i have to multiply two elements a and b i just take the the usual multiplication in the ring but in the opposite order okay so given a ring there is this opposite ring in which the multiplication is just the the product in the other order and so what we can do now is to think of this as instead of a j k b i j well i'll do the following i'll think of it as well it's just b i j into a j k except that this product is is taken in the opposite ring okay so now i'm i'm going to take the opposite product okay so uh, now that that's uh, already nicer it brings things into the same uh, setup as vector spaces the matrix c is actually the product b times a but we should just take care to to use not the usual ring multiplication but the multiplication in the opposite ring okay so what we have really shown so far is the the following statement um, that if you want to look at module homomorphisms from rn to rm um, then the sort of the correct formulation the correct way to think of it is the following each homomorphism gives rise to a matrix okay so this gives rise to an m cross n matrix and the elements are well they are elements of r of course but the correct way to think about it is that they are elements of r op so if you think of each homomorphism as giving you a matrix m cross n matrix with entries in r op then the composition takes on this rather nice uh, thing which is that if i compose two such homomorphisms from rn rm rp so this is phi and psi then as we just saw if this if the matrix of the first guy is an a this is an a and this matrix is b then the matrix of psi phi will just turn out to be so this matrix will turn out to be b a but remembering that the elements are a's and b's the elements of a and b are elements of r op and not elements of r okay and in fact this is uh, uh, we can also do the special case when n equals m so this is so recall we call these the space of endomorphisms so if i just take n equals m then end of rn just means all module homomorphisms from rn to itself Okay, and now this is uh, every such homomorphism to to every such homomorphism we can associate an n cross n matrix so let me just say mat n meaning n cross n matrix whose elements are in r op okay, so this is called the matrix uh, of this uh, homomorphism and now the beauty is that the space n rn is it's it's actually a ring okay so here's a little exercise um, exercise observe that end rn is a ring under composition of maps so this is a ring under point wise addition and composition uh, so addition is point wise addition and the multiplication is the composition of maps 
okay on the other hand mat the space of matrices with uh, over uh, with entries in a ring r is also a ring okay uh, under the usual matrix addition and matrix multiplication so observe that the right hand side is also a ring mat n entries in any ring is a ring under matrix addition and matrix multiplication and uh, check that this association uh, so here's the exercise check that phi going to matrix of phi is actually a ring homomorphism okay so we we actually checked uh, some bits of this which is i mean the 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 only thing really to check is that the multiplication is respected on the two sides but that was really the point that uh, we spent a lot of time over which is that when i take two homomorphisms phi and psi the composition of of psi and phi goes to the product of the two matrices except that i should think that the entries come from r op and not from r okay and recall also that we have sort of seen an instance of this uh, before in in one of the problem sessions which is that if i take n equals 1 which means i just think of r as a module over itself okay and i ask what are all the endomorphisms of r right which means what are all the uh, homomorphisms of r i mean homomorphisms from r to r then we we sort of had um, done this before that this is actually isomorphic to the ring r op okay and what was the map each homomorphism looks like a sort of a right multiplication okay so each homomorphism phi here uh, so what are the homomorphisms well uh, maybe i should say the map in the opposite direction is what we looked at given any element of r or r op it induces a homomorphism here phi sub b as follows phi sub b acting on x is x b the right multiplication by b map okay and that's exactly this the i mean this is the the thing we are looking at here is a generalization of that to to arbitrary values of n okay okay 